Today I want to talk about someone else talking about climate change, Hank Green to be precise. In a recent video, Hank came across as surprisingly cheerful about the possibility of deliberately modifying Earth's climate, what we call geoengineering. Should we take a giant step forward and do it intentionally and carefully? So are scientists as positive about these possibilities as Hank? Are there any risks that his video left out? And would it really be a good idea to hack the climate? I'm Adam, a climate scientist with a PhD from Oxford, sharing what you need to know about climate change. And it's no exaggeration to say that I am here because of people like Hank Green, who showed that YouTube could be so much more than just watching videos of cats falling over, and could also be an incredible place of learning and education, and still watching cats falling over. Hank is one half of the Vlog Brothers, a team who together have educated millions and started more projects than I could name. I mean, heck, at this point, I think they've started more projects than they could name. And so I'm always incredibly excited when either one of them talks about climate change, as Hank just did on a recent video on their channel. As we have to make really hard decisions about what to do about the actual impacts we are experiencing from climate change. So I thought what I could do today is watch some of the crucial clips from Hank's video, expand on some of the ideas, and put some of what he says in a little more context. So so what's this latest video even about? Well, it's titled The Biggest Science Story of the Week, and it's all about boats, as the thumbnail makes clear. But what do boats have to do with climate change? I hear you ask, and I was literally just about to get to that, so please don't interrupt. So boats have been burning dirty fuels, and recent rules have made them clean up their acts, which is good. But the sulfur which was in these dirty fuels was creating clouds, which were reflecting away some some of the sun's heat. So now that that sulfur is gone, the fuels are creating less clouds, which means less of the sun's heat is reflecting, and ultimately there has been a big temperature spike in the North Atlantic, which is less good. And among other things, this teaches us about an idea called geoengineering, the possibility that we could somehow hack the climate. In this case, we're specifically looking at something called solar radiation management geoengineering, the possibility that we could do something a bit like these ships to reflect away some of the sun's energy and cool the planet back down and count out some of that global warming that all that burning fossil fuels has been causing. Okay, so I think that's finally enough background information now. Let's see what Hank actually says in the video. So we start off with him looking at the temperature spike that we've seen in the North Atlantic. Which isn't particularly fun to look at. Like, it's scary times here on planet Earth. And as a climate scientist, I can confirm it is scary times here on planet Earth. I mean, it's not nice looking at the graphs we climate scientists are used to look at of things steadily getting worse, but it's extra unnice to look at graphs like this one showing a sudden spike of things getting worse. So geoengineering is this fairly controversial idea that you could intentionally change the climate of the planet. So I think describing it as fairly controversial is actually playing it down quite a bit. I would actually say it's one of the most controversial ideas in all of climate science. And yes, I have met plenty of climate scientists who think we absolutely need to think about it and study it, and that if we did it carefully and deliberately enough, it could do more good than harm. But I have also met plenty of climate scientists, I would probably estimate a bit more, who think that it would cause much more harm than good, and that ultimately we can't understand it as well as we would need to, and the risks are far too great. Now, Hank, in his video, absolutely takes a particular side of this debate, but I also think he doesn't really capture what a lot of scientists 
are saying and concerned about when it comes to geoengineering. It's different from when you accidentally change the climate of the planet, which is just the last hundred years. I think this is a really fair framing. What we have been doing to the planet is a huge climate modifying experiment. We've just been doing it without really thinking about it. And for a lot of the time, without really fully understanding or knowing what we're doing. Although to be fair, I don't think we could say that now. We now <laughs> understand the impact of burning fossil fuels and emitting greenhouse gases we're just still continuing to do it. This conversation is going to be a big deal. It's going to be a bigger and bigger and bigger deal over the next few decades as we have to make really hard decisions about what to do about the actual impacts we are experiencing from climate change. I think this is absolutely spot on. This conversation is a really big deal. We do need to make really hard decisions not least because the we in that sentence is badly defined. Some people might benefit from geoengineering while other people might suffer from it. And how do we end up deciding whether it's a good idea to implement or not when we might effectively be left with what we call the trolley problem, where we say, okay, enacting something might do more good than harm, but it might also directly affect and maybe even take the lives of particular people. There have been significantly fewer ship tracks. Scientists have been looking at this really carefully and their models are showing that like almost all of the new warming of the North Atlantic's surface of the sea can be attributed to just new light hitting it that wouldn't normally be hitting it. So just to be super clear, the Northern Atlantic has been heating up already anyway because of that whole global warming thing. And specifically what Hank is talking about being attributed to the uh, reduction in these ship's clouds is this extra bump in temperature that we've seen over the Northern Atlantic, which can be attributed to this reduction in sulfur in the fuels. Although it's important to mention that there might well be other factors at play. For example, this year is what we call an El Nino year, where particular regions of the ocean surface get hotter than usual, heating up the entire planet. It turns out global warming is worse than we thought it was. We were just being shielded from some of its effects by other pollution that we were throwing up into the atmosphere. So the way Hank phrases it here kind of suggests that we didn't know about this effect before and we're kind of surprised about it. And we absolutely did know about this effect before. Climate scientists have been studying and quantifying and trying to understand the effect of aerosols and sulfur in particular on the climate for many, many years. And they also absolutely take it into account when they assess, for example, how long we have to reduce greenhouse gas emissions or when we might hit particular temperature limits. On top of that, it was actually foreseeable that reducing the sulfur in these fuels would lead to this kind of temperature bump. What's particularly interesting and valuable about this kind of accidental experiment is that it allows scientists to, to some extent, quantify this effect. And in particular, it seems like the effect might have been bigger than scientists first reckoned. But in another way, and I think a bigger way, in the long term, this is good news. Because the experiment that we just ran here is priceless. So this is absolutely true. Aerosols and their influence on clouds are one of the biggest things we want to learn about in climate science. And so any kind of accidental experiment like this that helps us understand that is incredibly valuable. And yes, it is incredibly valuable for understanding something like geoengineering, which is the focus of what Hank talks about here. But it's also just really valuable for us to understand how all the different pieces of climate change fit together and to understand how rapidly the climate might change after all. It's also worth mentioning this isn't the only experiment like this that climate scientists have had a chance to study. So most recently and most notably, there was a reduction in aerosols when the world locked down in response to COVID. And basically every time a volcano goes off, that also gives climate scientists a chance to study the effects of aerosols. And the thing is, you don't have to use sulfur dioxide to seed clouds. There's other ways to do it that don't involve a bunch of acid rain and giving people asthma. But here's the thing. The intention of geoengineering would be to somehow reverse the effects of 
greenhouse gases. But even if we found the best possible molecule for the job of reflecting away the sun's energy, that wouldn't reverse the effects of greenhouse gases. And that's because reflecting away the sun's energy is not the opposite thing to stopping the Earth's energy from leaving, which is effectively what greenhouse gases do. And so even if some kind of solar radiation management geoengineering did reverse the heating effects of greenhouse gases, they would have other effects on things like rainfall, potentially disrupting weather patterns all across the world. And disruption to weather patterns means disrupting and potentially even taking people's lives. Now, some people would argue that the positives of this would far outweigh the negative impacts, but that's a conversation that we actively need to have. And I would also say that that conversation can only really be as good as our information is. And at the moment, we don't have that good, that accurate information, even with this kind of accidental experiment. Some people say that we can't discuss geoengineering because people will see it as an excuse to continue just burning fossil fuels. This is definitely one reason why people are scared of talking about the topic, but it's definitely not the only reason. I mean, as I've said, a lot of people are genuinely scared it could do more harm than good. On top of that, a lot of people are scared about the ethics around it. For example, some countries might hugely benefit from carrying out this kind of geoengineering, while others might suffer, for example, because monsoon rains get disrupted. How do we end up deciding whether we could or should do this? And who is the we in that sentence? So there are a lot of, I would say, legitimate concerns about it, rather than just being scared that it's a distraction. It's gonna get hot enough that we're gonna see a lot of humans dying. Those stories are gonna be very big in other parts of the world, but they're also gonna be like local stories in the US. Like pe we're gonna have people here dying of heat. So this is all true and all really tragic, but I would say that the use of the future tense is a bit strange here. This is all stuff that we're already seeing today. Climate scientists have found that every heat wave in the world is made more likely and more intense because we've heated the planet up. And some of the devastating heat waves we've seen across the world already this year in 2023 would have been virtually impossible without climate change. And these heat waves are costing lives across the world today, including in the United States. And for an example of the scale of the lives that heat waves can cost, it's estimated that tens of thousands of people died who otherwise wouldn't have died because of the heat waves that took place in Europe in 2022. And we have to do like three things at the same time. We have to stop putting new carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We have to start taking old CO2 out of the atmosphere. And we have to deal with the impacts of the current warming, which exists now and we cannot avoid. So this is 100% true. I would just say that some of the people watching Hank's video might get the impression that for this third thing, the main and perhaps only thing we can do is some kind of geoengineering, which is absolutely not the main or the only thing we can do. For example, when it comes to extreme heat, as Hank was just talking about, we can take measures, for example, stopping people from working outside during extreme heat, setting up cooling centers so people can stay cool, educating people about how to stay hydrated, better insulating homes. There are huge things we can do to protect people, to save lives before we start modifying the climate, especially as those things don't tend to come with the huge unintended side effects of pumping a whole bunch of things into the atmosphere. What we're saying is, should we take a giant step forward and do it instead of accidentally and haphazardly and in the most reckless manner possible, do it intentionally and carefully. So this is a really strikingly positive way of talking about something that a lot of climate scientists have really serious concerns about. Saying that we even can do it intentionally and carefully brushes aside the huge ethical questions that a lot of people still have about geoengineering, not to mention all the fundamental science questions 
about what would actually happen if we implemented it. That's not to say that we unambiguously shouldn't do it, but rather that describing it as a giant step forward is not really capturing the huge issues around it. So that's a little extra info from me about this video, but I was also keen to hear what other climate scientists think. My friend Miriam is also a YouTuber and also a climate scientist, but unlike me, she has actually met Hank Green in real life and spoken to him about climate change. So I was keen to hear her thoughts about this latest video. Here's Miriam. Thanks, Adam. So one of the big issues with the argument that we've been accidentally geoengineering the planet for centuries, so we should just do it intentionally now, is in order to do it intentionally, everyone needs to be on board. Geoengineering has global implications, therefore ethically, morally, it should be a global decision. Fortunately, we have entire international policy frameworks for building global cooperation. International policy is designed to reduce harms across borders, protect national sovereignty, and promote that international cooperation. This is important because for so much of global history, rich global north countries have stomped around and done whatever we've wanted. And that's a big part of why climate change is as bad as it is. While imperfect, these ideals and systems are part of building a better world for everyone on it. They've allowed us to pass global environmental and climate policy like the Montreal Protocol and Paris Agreement, which have already reduced future warming by over a degree Celsius. But we know these policies aren't enough, and if we want to keep pushing global climate policy forward, we need these norms. We need the global community to keep coming together. Which is exactly why solar radiation management is so worrisome. Because as most people are currently proposing, it's often unilateral, only one country or company or even scarier individual is making the decision without any international regulation or consequences. And we don't know anywhere near enough about the transboundary harms that changing elements of a complex climate system can bring. Because of this, we've seen members of a few of the major multilateral environmental agreements, like the Convention on Biological Diversity, the London Convention on the Prevention of Marine Pollution, and the Montreal Protocol adopt statements about their concerns around geoengineering. And that's because many forms of geoengineering fundamentally break international norms so much that it likely makes future climate policy impossible and jeopardizes the few agreements we've been able to make. Back to you, Adam. Check out Miriam's awesome channel about climate change over here. Ultimately, I am really glad that Hank brought this up, even if I think there is important additional information that everyone should know. Geoengineering is a really important and really controversial topic, and I do think that everyone should be thinking about it both the really positive potential that Hank outlines in his video and the very serious and legitimate concerns that a lot of scientists have about it. And speaking of the climate change things we should all be thinking about, when we talk about the 1.5 degree temperature limit, what does that actually mean? And is it still even achievable? Well, check out my video over here to find out. Okay, until next time, bye. <sighs> I ran out of air.